This is Weekend Break, a download from the BBC's weekend programme on the World Service. I'm Nuala McGovern with my two guests, the London-based journalist and writer Christina Adone and the UK correspondent for Germany's Zeit newspaper, John Jungklausen. Let's turn to cities. The inhabitants of London, Paris, New York and many other cities across the globe have experienced that phenomenon of gentrification. Uh, Wealthier people moving into traditionally working class areas, it attracts developers, forces up the price of accommodation and at times forces the established residents out. Well in San Francisco, so not far from California's Silicon Valley, the tech boom has sent rents and house prices skyrocketing. There are a group of activists from the city and they've set out to map the gentrification and also record the Voices as an oral, oral history project of some of those that are affected. My colleague Ellen Otson has been speaking to Erin McElroy, who is part of the Anti Eviction Mapping Project. We are in an eviction crisis in San Francisco right now. Um, uh, evictions have risen dramatically, especially since 2011 with the rise of the tech boom. And it's a huge problem in San Francisco, it's also a regional problem. What we're seeing is that real estate speculators are uh, taking advantage of the housing market and often buying properties and flipping them really quickly and in the process kicking out uh, long-time tenants. So the city is changing demographically. A lot of long-time community members are being displaced. What we're seeing is that a lot of uh, younger, whiter tech workers are moving to the city uh, right now the hiring stats of Google, Twitter, et cetera, generally tend to be about 70% male, 60% white. So that definitely impacts who's moving to the city. We are definitely losing the African-American population in San Francisco very rapidly, uh, as well as in Alameda County. Uh, we're losing the Latino population in the mission, uh, which is very significant as well. Erin, you've been talking to people who are facing eviction or have been evicted. Uh, Tell us about that. The Anti-Eviction Mapping Project has an oral history project in which we've been interviewing tenants who have been evicted or who are facing eviction, uh, such as uh, Yasmin and uh, Teresa Flandrick. Teresa speaks to that. Um, Yasmin was displaced and is now in Oakland and uh, speaks to what it's like to move to a city where... uh, one faces potentially being a gentrifier after having been evicted from one's home in San Francisco, which is an important issue. This has been a long two-year process, but what I learned over time is the the importance of community was much greater than the building. This is where I feel safe. This is where I raised my son. Right now I'm focusing on fighting to try to stay and try to stay above all within my community. Having been displaced from San Francisco and being a part of a conversation about gentrification in the city, I feel like it makes moving to Oakland also like a sensitive and problematic thing. Now we are potentially the gentrifiers of Oakland and there's a whole other set of issues around that, specifically around race. Doesn't gentrification also improve the neighbourhood? The tech industry has has brought jobs, you get better facilities, the neighbourhood is less run down. The argument that the tech industry likes to purport is that they're improving the neighbourhood. But as we've seen in San Francisco, trickle-down economics is not working at all. The homeless population has increased dramatically. There are more people living in tents under overpasses right now than there ever have been. And the Brookings Institute reported that income inequality is growing more rapidly in San Francisco than in any other U.S. city. So therefore, the money that tech is bringing in isn't reaching the majority of the population and especially the uh, poor and working class. That's Erin McElroy speaking to Weekend's Ellen Otson. Um, it's an interesting one and I think one that everybody has an opinion on. Let me start with my guest, John Jungassen, and also Christina Adone here in studio with me. John, you've thought about this. Yes, well, I think there are two issues here. One is that the, um, the people we are hearing from here, we're talking about being displaced. Now, 20, 30 years ago, you would have just described that as they, they were part of an economic process whereby they were priced out of an area and moved from San Francisco to Oakland. Now they are, you know, there's a sense of victimhood now, which is more to do, I think, with the, with the uh, conversation that, and the, the, the way the debate is, is uh, conducted in America. Um, the problem is, of course, that um, the market forces are sort of out of control in a way. Um, when there are more homeless people, um, when people are 
uh, uh, no longer, when the social mix of classes, is, of, 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 of cities, is um, in danger of, of uh, being... being um, I suppose kind of stratified in a way, right? I mean, I thought the part. figures that <clears throat> uh, when she was saying 60% uh, male, that is coming in, and I think a high percentage also white. I mean, do government authorities, when it comes to a city, do they have a responsibility to keep a certain demographic within that city, Christina? Well, I think that you don't want to have a, homo- a homogenous city centre that is all white, uh, you know, preppy, uh, wealthy, male, at the expense of the kind of diversity that makes for a very rich cultural life. So that is a problem. On the other hand, you know, gentrification does mean that the neighbourhood goes up. It does mean that the rundown houses become posh little, you know, cute houses. It does mean that there is a sense of uh, well-being and development for those who can afford it. The problem, the problem is that it underlies this uh, social, you know, social mobility. Uh, in in America, which is no longer what it once was. And where does it end, I suppose, is my next question. So with San Francisco, for people who are not familiar with it, it is a a pretty small area, really. You go across the bridges. Not great transport, I have to say, in that part, surprisingly, I think, considering it's so environmentally friendly, etc. Go to Oakland, but now we're hearing that people are moving to Oakland and displacing people that are there. Um, And I suppose, is there a way that that can be halted if not reversed I but sorry no. i i don't Go believe ahead. in i don't believe that government intervention would help in any way i would imagine that there is an, uh, some degree of social housing in both san francisco and in oakland which ac- could accommodate uh, people it is certainly a loss for culture if you have a, a monotheistic you know uh, a, um, a homogenous culture but on the other hand, you can't have government intervening on that. I, I, I think I, I entirely agree that the way, the only way state intervention is sensible and desirable here is by providing uh, social housing. Um, I was listening to some of the voices from that oral history project and uh, there was one that was quite interesting. He talked about, you know, San Francisco. The reason you go there is because it was cool and it was hip. And that's what was this unique selling point yes. of that city. So if it doesn't have that anymore, will people still flock in the same way? So who knows? But an interesting discussion, of course, and relevant to so many cities around the world. You're listening to Weekend with me, Nuala McGovern.